I want to show you one other feature real quick. Uh, right now, uh, our program is in the CPU, and we transferred it from this, uh, this PC. I've got this same project on a USB pen drive. This USB pen drive is programmed into the uh, USB port. We've got two USB ports on the CPU. On the CPU, we've got the uh, USB expansion port, which is the bottom USB that comes down to the, uh, the P3EX. And then we've got a second USB, which is, is uh, for a data, it's a data port. It's for a, U, it's for a USB pen drive. So from here, I can take and I can go to my menu on my CPU and I can scroll down to my USB drive and hit enter. And I've got options to save to the pen drive, to load the pack from the pen drive, or remove. So I'm going to select load the pack and I'm going to hit enter. And I've got it set up and you can put in a password at this point. So if you want this to be password protected, uh, you can password protect it, but I, at this point I don't have one, so I'm going to hit enter. And it's going to give me an error because right now it's going to tell me that the switch on the CPU needs to be in stop mode. So I'll take this, drop my run switch down to stop. Okay. And I will load, enter, and I've got write pack progress and I've got an error, the pack com. The reason it's giving me that is because we're also still connected to the CPU with the software. You can't have two devices writing a project to the CPU at the same time. So it's going to require that we come in and we're going to take the software and we're going to go offline. So now then we're no longer talking to the CPU with the PC or the programming software. Now we'll insert the pen drive that's got the project on it. And we're in stop mode. Our PC is disconnected from the controller. We will hit menu. We will go to USB drive and hit enter. We'll hit load, enter our password, and write pack in progress. Our progress is ramping up. And what's going to happen when we left the software, our toggle outputs task was in the disabled folder. And so I believe once this is complete, which it is, we will switch back to run mode. And our project now should have the task back in the one second folder. So if we go now to the, to the uh, go back online, it's going to say, hey, there's differences. So we want to copy the project from the pack. Right now, our toggle output folder was in the disabled task. That was the one that was transferred down from the PC. So we will copy the project that's in the pack now, and this is the project that was transferred to it from the USB drive. Copy that. Uh, we don't need to save that one. And now you'll see our toggle outputs file is in the run every seconds folder. All right, data login. Let's take a look at our data logger real quick. Let me transfer our pen drive from our project pen drive. Remove that, put that away, and we'll put our data logging pen drive in. Data logging pen drive is in, and we will pull up under the application tools, we will click on the data logger. The data logger is very straightforward. If you're wanting to pull some, some basic information into a file, you have a couple of options. You can do the event data logging, which is event uh, and where you just specify a tag, and when that event triggers in your process, then you start logging data. We will use that, and I'll set this, uh, I'll choose this log data tag, and that way I can manually trigger it within the, uh, the software from the data view window. You also have a scheduled data logging, and so you can actually schedule different events to happen and so every minute every hour every day once per week once per month you specify how you want this to happen and then when that time comes it will start triggering and logging the data you also can specify the file that you want to save into we have a default format that that uh, tags the CSV file with the month date hour minutes and seconds and then you can also schedule creation of new files within that within the pen drive as well alright so we're going to take and do just a very simple log where we're just logging the minutes and the seconds of the uh, 
of the process, excuse me, of the, uh, of the pack onto the pin drive. So that is ready. All I need to do is turn on this log data and we will, we will be logging data. So I'll open up my data view window and data view. I've got the log data tag set up. It is now set to go on. I will send that to the CPU. Now under my value column, uh, you'll see that my log data bit is now true, it's on. And so we are currently logging data. Now I'm gonna let that log while we cover the uh, word histogram, the bit histogram, and then we'll come back and check the data and see, uh, see what type of information we've got stored on the pen drive. So we'll take a look, we've got two histograms. Now these, these are not trend graphs, these are not real time data. What you're looking at um, is you've got trend graphs which you can see real time data, but it doesn't give you the detail that you're gonna get out of the histogram. With a bitter word histogram, you're actually going to be able to see, um, you're actually going to be able to see data down to even the scan sequence. And so we will open up, I've got one in here, so we will open this one up and I've just got a few tags that I've got in my project currently. Move this over. Monitoring and sine wave. Let me show you one thing real quick. Right, and this you'll see the green and the red outlines on the uh, contacts for these. If you go to tools and um, options and go to ladder options, and we want to use block fills on our contacts and coils. Say okay. Now then you get a much more graphical uh, representation of what uh, the conditions of your contacts and your coils actually are. So you can see this a little bit better from uh, across the plant floor or, floor or when you're monitoring a system that's installed in an enclosure. Uh, let's take a look at this now. We'll go to our data view. Right now none of this data is compiling. So we go to our data view, pull it back up, and we are going to call, this is in a run when called task folder. So right now none of this is being executed. So if we go to our main control window and we're going to call sine wave with the call sign. So we'll pull our data view up and we have a call sign contact. We will send that edit, turn that one on. And now then if we take a look at our sine wave task, you'll see that our, our data values are now calculating. So we will go back to our histogram window now. Now that our data's are, the data's for these tags are now calculating. So we'll send this configuration to the controller. Uh, we've got everything configured already. We've got the tags specified and we've got multiple options here. I'll go ahead and start this manually. We've got a couple of options here. You can do it just, just like the data logger. You've got a manual option so you can just start and stop it. Or you can select by Boolean. So if you've got an event in your process that you want to use to trigger uh, the recording of the data on the histograms, you can specify a Boolean tag and it will begin recording. Okay, so this should have our buffer full at this time. Uh, we've got sample rates that you can specify. Right now we're sampling every one millisecond. You can see the sample rate that you can specify from 1 to 65, 535. And so you can get this to sample as fast as you want, but you do have a limited buffer. And so if you slow your sample rate down, you can get a much uh, wider view of the data. Uh, so now then, we'll stop this and we will read the data from our controller. And we see the uh, sine waves that we've created based on uh, the, uh, the uh, tags that we specified. Now we've got a couple of, uh, couple of things that we can look at. I've got another project. Excuse me. I've got another tag, another folder, another project where we're uh, scaling the amplitude on those same, those same sine waves. And again, right now, we are not Nothing is calculating in this folder because it's 
it's in a run when called, and currently we're not calling this one. So we'll go back to our main control, and we'll see we've got a call scale contact that will call the, uh, the scale amplitude task. We'll go back to our data view window. We will turn on the call scale, which it's on. We'll highlight that, send that edit. Now then, our scale amplitude calculations are calculated now. Yes, yes. So we pull our histogram back up. We will switch over to one of our currently configured histograms, the uh, call scale. We'll open that. We've got some changes. We've got the same tag. We've got a, a different, let's change this. Um, well, let's leave it at three. Let's leave it at three for now. And again, you've got uh, a couple of different options for the data collections protocol. And uh, the one that we're using is, is to discard the new data when the pack buffer is full. So you'll fill up the buffer, and then you'll discard anything else that's trying to get into the buffer. You also have the option to discard the old data. So that basically, you fill up the buffer, and it just keeps rolling through. And then once you take that snapshot, you have the latest data. So we will start this. And with a three millisecond sample rate, it's still going to be very quick. Should take us about 10 or 15 seconds to fill the buffer. And once we get there, get to that point, wait a minute, I've got to send that configuration before I start it. Or we're not going to get anything. One other thing that you've got uh, on this, you've got an amplitude marker. This is really beneficial. You'll see at the bottom, you've got uh, your sample numbers. So you can actually track this down if you've got a process that's got a glitch in it. You can track it down to the actual scan in your process that you're having an issue with. I'll show you how you can zoom in uh, using the graph. Uh, but this amplitude marker comes in handy when you've got multiple channels that you're uh, that you're working with because you can, uh, if you've got one particular bit that's having an issue, and when it triggers, you can look to see what the values of your other tags are, and you can align your amplitude marker to see exactly the scan that this happens on, and see the positions or the values of your other tags when that issue happens. So we should be more than adequate on our buffer now. Let's read this data from our pack. We've got a little bit different looking sine wave now. We've got a little bit of a, uh, an amplitude added into our sine, and so it's like we're looking at a very, very noisy sine wave now. But this is uh, just a little, a little different view, and it gives you, a, uh, you can see all the different amplitude that's put into this. And so if you've got a, you know, if you're watching this and you see something that's way out of control and you're looking at this and say, okay, it's right in this area, um, then we'll mark that. And you don't have to mark that. That's just kind of a guideline that helps you. You can put that out of the way. But let's say your issue is in this area, so you want to kind of scan, uh, zoom in to see what's happening. You just click and drag. Very simple. And you can really zoom in to that feature, to that area. And again, you're looking at your sample rates down here. You've got your values on the left, your sample rate across the bottom, or your, your sample number. And you can get uh, very detailed at what you're looking at to try and figure out where your problem is located. Uh, and then again, just uh, drag it back to the left, and it uh, default and it zooms back out, or you can scan again right back in. So again, you don't have the real time trending uh, of a trend graph, but with a trend graph, you're not going to be able to get that type of of, um, of uh, microscopic view of each individual scan and what's happening to your process.